to Lawrence's question. Our, yes, you can put in chat, but if we were all talking, it'd be, it'd be difficult to move, move forward. So feel free to type questions in chat and I'll, I'll be answering our chat. Yeah, we'll, we'll be looking at the chat and the Q&A um, throughout today's uh, webinar. So super excited about today's webinar, Liz. And Michelle, Me Michelle too. we have lots of questions already. So I saw that Michael had asked a question. Did you answer it about QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Desktop? You want to I did. Know? I did. We okay, can cool. do that. We can go that. all kinds of ways. We can go all kinds of ways. Lots of configurations. QuickBooks Online to Desktop, Desktop to Online, Desktop to Desktop, Online to Online. We can do it all. So. <laughs> and I can't wait to see. So Julie asked, she's on the fence that she's going to make a decision. I can't wait to see what you end up deciding after. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. All so right. We have so like much content. Started. We have to get started like right away. So okay. first of all, we're unveiling our new PowerPoint deck. Uh, so Transaction Pro, Michelle, you guys get our first, the first webinar with our new deck, with the sparkly new deck. Yay. It's literally a sparkling new deck. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> So welcome everybody. I'm super excited about today's uh, episode. Today is best practices for migrating data with Transaction Pro. So I feel like Transaction Pro is the old friend, right? Old friend, one of my oldest friends. I've been using Transaction Pro for 10 years. Um, I've been using it to migrate data since day one, back when I was desktop only. Um, I was using it to solve clients' problems and, and, and move data and do conversions and you know, doing those shell files. Do you remember those, Liz? When you had oh. your QuickBooks file was way too big, so you had to create a shell and then migrate all the data over. Um, yeah, and so I'm sure some people still do that. I don't do that anymore because I'm almost exclusively QuickBooks Online now. So but we can do cool things with QuickBooks Online. So we can. Transaction Pro makes us look really smart. Yes. Quickly working in our clients' data. Yeah, like when, when they ask, can my QuickBooks do that? And you say, yes, with the help of Transaction Pro. Exactly. Right. So Liz, tell people who you are for people that- Sure. Know. So Liz Scott, I'm a practitioner like most that are on this call. So which means that I work with small business owners primarily. And then we look at QuickBooks and make the best use of apps that are out there. And so app consulting uh, happens a lot in our firm. It's very fun to work efficiently, which of course is where Heather and I's love for apps <laughs> became the appy hour. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I also have my uh, Satterly Training Consulting. I'm Heather Satterly, for those of you that I haven't met before. And I also work with companies and other accountants, um, anybody who's looking to master QuickBooks Online and add automate their processes through the use of third-party applications. So uh, love that. I also just started a brand new uh, bookkeeping firm called Back Office Ally. So now I'm doing some bookkeeping and tax. I've been wrestling with some expensify and American Express all day. So that, that's been, that's been my Tuesday. <laughs> so, yep. Um, but that's fun. It's, it's all good. It's all fun and exciting. So we also have, if my clicker would work here, uh, well, huge thank you to our champagne level sponsor, Right Networks. It's the leading cloud hosting provider for accounting professionals. Um, been around for a long, long time. Uh, I had clients hosted on, on Right Networks, gosh, a really long time. <laughs> um, you know, they're like the premier hosting and now you can host your, uh, your tax software on Right Networks as well. So if you're using the CERT or Pro Series, which is the desktop tax uh, software options for from Intuit, then you can host that right on your Right Networks cloud hosting account. So big thank you to them for their support and helping to make Appy Hour possible for all of us. Uh, also a huge thank you to Transaction Pro, which is a part of the Right Networks family. So Transaction Pro became part of the Right Networks family. How long has it been, Michelle? Since um, I think it was in first quarter 2018. So first it's been a while. Right around there. Yeah. And, and it's, I mean, they've done such a great job. It's a beautiful, the new interface, which we're going to see today is gorgeous. Um, really loving it. So, um, 
yeah, so a huge thank you to that. We're going to be talking about how we can use Transaction Pro in, to import, export, and delete data in both QuickBooks Desktop and online um, in minutes. And Michelle, I'd like to introduce Michelle. She's a customer success lead at Transaction Pro. Um, Michelle, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how you joined uh, the Right Networks team? Hey, um, like she said, my name is Michelle Harris. I'm the customer success lead with Transaction Pro. Before that, I was a private consultant with QuickBooks. I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro advisor. So I had been doing the consulting game for 10, 12 years before that. And um, actually, Right Networks found me. <laughs> so, because um, I had some previous experience with other software as well. And so I've been so happy they did. I'm loving um, working with this software and helping be a part of it as it continues into its future. And so, you know, knowing that you've been on both sides of it now is really, really helpful whenever we have questions. And so I'm sure that a lot of, a lot of the practitioners that are out there get these emails from Transaction Pro, which is you. <laughs> so a lot of the update articles that are written, a yes. lot of the how-to resources, that's Michelle. So we are very, very fortunate to have you here with us today. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is we've already welcomed you and introduced ourselves. We're going to talk about best practice, best practices for migrating data. Um, then we're going to raise our toast and then it's kind of mixed up a little bit because we kind of sprinkled our coolest thing we did this month right smack in the middle of our educational content. And there's a reason for that. So um, we'll show you that. And then we're going to continue on with a demonstration of how to use Transaction Pro in real life. So we're actually going to migrate some data from QuickBooks Desktop onto QuickBooks Online. Um, so that should be fun. Fun, yeah, fun, fun. It. So, uh, and then we'll talk about what, what's coming up in, uh, for the rest of the month and out into the future. Lots of exciting things happening. So um, we're gonna dive right in with best practices for migrating QuickBooks data. I know the first time I ever tried to move any data from QuickBooks, at the time that I was first doing this was desktop to desktop. Um, it was a disaster. <laughs> It was really time consuming and it took me a, you know, a, long, a long time to kind of figure out um, how to get the data to translate in the way that I wanted it to. And I think the biggest hurdle was learning the QuickBooks schema, like was really understanding the database underneath QuickBooks and how the different um, lists and transactions related to each other. And I felt like once I invested the time to really understand that, it made it so much easier because it all kind of just made sense, right? Once you understand the order in which you, you know, how things relate in the QuickBooks database, then it kind of makes sense on how you should be importing the data and also understanding what fields need to be complete um, and what fields are actually going to translate from one transaction type to another, especially when you're dealing with link transactions, right? Like invoices and receive payments and deposited. Great point. Yeah. So we're going to start there is, you know, when you are getting started um, using third party apps, especially apps like Transaction Pro, where you're, you're really working with the, the data, right? You're working with the raw data. Um, and it, there's a lot of flexibility on how you map that data. And you're bringing data in from an Excel spreadsheet, right? So it's really understanding how do you how are you going to have that spreadsheet set up? so that um, you're able to map it effectively and efficiently. So it goes into QuickBooks, so all the fields actually go into the right place. Have you ever done that, Liz, where you did an import and you imported a field into the wrong field into QuickBooks? I've done well, that. It, um, <laughs> one of the things that we're gonna be showing later is you know, errors that happen. Right. And so what's really nice is, is if you get a field that just doesn't make sense, you're probably going to get an error. Otherwise, yeah, that's the whole reason for sometimes having those backups, right? Oh, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Go back. Okay, backup is so important um, for sure. So one of the core or, things. Or, you know, I, my thing, Heather, is sometimes I get overconfident. It's like, oh, I've done this. Right. And yes. then that's it. Whoops. That's, Oopsie. And that's when it totally bites you, right, Michelle? Like as soon as you're like, I've done this a thousand times, I'm gonna go do it. I don't need to check it this one time. That's the time that, you know, 
the uh, the last name goes into the first name field and the, for like a thousand customers and you're like, oh. Yep. We've <laughs> all gotta, been there. <laughs> yeah, no, I gotta We've all been it. there. Yep. Yep. yep, even Murph says back up after every step. Back, back up after every step and take a look at it another time. Take a second look at it. So for sure. Um, one of the really cool resources that, um, that Transaction Pro has available to us as accounting professionals is the desktop data dictionary and um, the online data dictionary. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and click on these and it should open it up because I put the little hyperlink in there for, for you guys too. Um, but the desktop data dictionary, if you click on that link, and I'll, I'll upload the slides later, and the links will be in the, in the PDF, so you'll have those. Um, but if I go into this uh, resource article, right over here on the right-hand side is an attachment. And if you download that, it is an Excel workbook that has the entire QuickBooks desktop data schema. So it gives you the information that you need to really understand what the transaction fields are or what the fields in the database, um, you know, how they're typed in, because that's important um, as you're actually doing the mapping in the Excel workbooks is you have to make sure that it looks exactly the same so that you can map it together, you know, so you can map it correctly. So for example, with this ref number, um, if you notice there's no space between ref and number, that's actually a really important detail, right? Because if I'm going in and I'm doing mapping um, in, a, uh, in a spreadsheet and I'm trying to import it in, if I, that one little space could actually uh, cause an error when I'm doing an import. So I love the fact that we have this resource available to us. Um, it's something that, that I think really helped me when I was first getting started with data migration to understand um, how, uh, you know, how, how all of the different fields related to the entities and to the lists and to the transactions um, so that I could, I could actually step into this role and start to do this type of work. Yep, and it takes time to learn this, so this is a really good resource. It is a really good resource. Another really great resource um, in addition to this is uh, CData, which is a, another Excel tool but completely different um, for different purposes. It can help you to do some reporting and things like that. Um, they have a really nice library too of, uh, of the database schema. They have, I like the way they have it organized. So that's another nice resource, um, you know, that, that you can use. And then we also have, uh, we also have the online data dictionary, which we'll give that a second to open up as well. Oops, looks like it opened up twice. So um, that QuickBooks online data dictionary, you can find here, it has a list of the different types and then it even has some visuals to kind of help you get started understanding that. And a nice resource for the, uh, the online and, the, and the, uh, the desktop APIs, if you wanna go real deep and heavy, is go on out to developer.intuit.com, head over to the API docs and tools, and there's actually an API reference. And the API reference also lists all of the uh, all of the, um, the names of the different fields um, for every single list entity and transaction in QuickBooks. And there's also some other, other things that you can do. And you can view the API for QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Payments, Desktop, and you can even see it for T-Sheets. Okay, so um, these are all really great uh, resources. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna go ahead and paste that into the chat so that you guys, if you wanna go look at that, you can do that. Um, all right, so that was uh, what I wanted to talk about as far as the, the database schema. You gotta make sure that you invest some time in that. It does, as Liz said, it does take some time to learn it, but it's well worth it. And once you understand the database, um, kind of the world's your oyster as far as working with apps and becoming creative with apps. Wouldn't you say, Liz and Michelle, that once you kind of understand that whole database, it's like the things that you can, it's almost like, when people ask you, can QuickBooks do that, you look at it completely differently, right? Because mm -hmm. you're no longer looking at, can QuickBooks the product do it? You're looking at, well, what can I do with QuickBooks um, yeah. using other tools um, like Transaction Pro? Well, the data utility tools, those are super fun to, to use. And that's where you start getting really efficient with mm -hmm. entering transactions. And, you know, my 
my first experience with that was, you know, working with, with, I think Transaction Pro was the first data utility tool that I used. And then Murph introduced me to C data, which I was like, whoosh. Right. <laughs> and then it went from, you know, just what all can you do? And okay. with Transaction Pro, I, that, you know, you've got some ability to um, even teach your clients how to use it because it's super easy once you get in there and you start understanding how to manipulate the data. Right. And the fact that you can save the mappings and you can, and you, like you said, manipulate the data, which is something we won't cover today, but we'll talk about it. We'll talk about how you can actually go in and do some pretty, pretty fancy, fancy. Yeah. Things. So what's next? What do we have? All right. So uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about when we're talking about migrating data, because that is the topic of this, of this webinar today, is we're going to talk a little bit about utilizing the built-in tools in QuickBooks to migrate your data. So I find that um, you know, using QuickBooks built-in tools along with a tool like Transaction Pro Importer actually works really well. So there's, you know, you can export data out of QuickBooks Desktop in an IIF file and then import it using Transaction Pro Importer. So if you're just importing into, you know, your list or whatever into um, QuickBooks Online, you can you can do that. Um, the other thing that you can do, although right now I don't know if anybody else has experienced this lately, but the the <laughs> the right now the QuickBooks uh, uh, QuickBooks Online conversion tool is not working properly. It's doing some really funky things over the last day or so. So hopefully that'll be fixed soon. Um, but when it does work, <laughs> um, one of the nice things that you can do is you can just import the list. So if you go through your QuickBooks desktop data, you have the option to do the migration over to QuickBooks Online just of the list and your beginning balances. So if you don't want to bring over in trans any transactions, maybe you have a client that has 20 years of transactions in there and it's garbage, you, but you know that their customer and vendor lists um, are good, you could actually just do a conversion to bring the settings and those lists over, which is really helpful. So um, to get to the built-in conversion tools um, in QuickBooks Desktop, you're going to go to that company menu and then export to QuickBooks Online. I don't recommend you do it today because as of yesterday, it was not working very well. Um, and then you can also still convert from QuickBooks Online to QuickBooks Desktop. Um, for a while, they were saying you can't do that, but yeah, you can. So we're going to kind of talk about that as well today and show you some tricks, uh, tips and tricks to do that. So to export from QuickBooks Online back to Desktop, you're going to go to the gear, then tools, and then export data. Um, so we're just gonna briefly kind of go through, just touch on some tricks and tips that you may not know about when you're using these tools, and then we're gonna dive right into Transaction Pro, um, the Transaction Pro product. So the QuickBooks Desktop to QuickBooks Online Conversion Tool, um, some items and details are not gonna convert, and I put a, a, a link here to an article that kind of tells you exactly what will go over from desktop to online, um, so you can refer to that. Um, I've also included an accountant's guide to conversion that Intuit has put out um, from QuickBooks Desktop to Online that has some nice screenshots that I thought everybody could benefit from. One of the interesting things that I found in this particular guide when I was reviewing, I told Liz this morning, I'm like, it says that you can convert up to 500,000 targets, but the help, uh, the help on QuickBooks um, community still says 350,000 targets. So not real sure. I didn't have a chance to check with Intuit to see which is the right answer. My gut is it's 350,000, um, but it would certainly be nice if we're now able to, um, you know, to convert larger, larger companies. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, you can use the import tool in the QuickBooks desktop product um, to just import the lists and balances if that's what you'd like to do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and say one of the questions, you just said it, but then one of the questions that was asked in our Q&A was, you know, the, the set chart of accounts that QuickBooks gives you by default. Yes. Can you edit that? And the answer is yes, you can purge your data file, which right. we talked about a few uh, months ago where you can actually purge the QBO file. So there's a how-to out there. Uh, but then once you do that, then you might want to say, here's my template that I prefer to use. And then you could use Transaction Pro to, to push in that list that, that 
you say these right. are the actual accounts that I want to use. And yeah, some you people say this is my template that I use for these types of businesses, whether it's uh, property management businesses or retail, but you could have a standard list. You definitely can. Um, and what you're going to see in just a few minutes is that Transaction Pro um, has created a template for us for pretty much any type of list or transaction that you want to bring in. Um, and you can go ahead and populate your data in there for the type of entity you want to create. So if you are geographically, if you're if all your clients in one geographical area and you know all the vendors that everybody, you know, the electric company is always the same, the cable company is always the same, you can actually populate those, um, you know, those vendors along with the chart of accounts and other things and then just zip them right into your new company using Transaction Pro. Um, a couple of tools that you can use in QuickBooks Desktop to clean up your data before you do a conversion. As you guys know, when you convert from desktop to online, a couple of things happen. So first of all, if you have inactive items in desktop, they go over in QuickBooks Online. You can't get rid of them ever, right? In QuickBooks Desktop, we can delete list items. We can't do that in QuickBooks Online. So it is beneficial to go through, if you're gonna do a conversion, and clean up those lists in desktop first, because if you can delete any, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna wanna do that in desktop before you do that. So a couple of tools that we're gonna quickly take a look at is um, the add, it, add edit multiple list items. So if you need to go through and quickly edit the lists in QuickBooks Desktop before you export or convert, um, you can do use that tool. We're also gonna talk about the condense and archive tool. So if you have 20 years of data and you wanna purge, um, you know, some of that data and get summary data instead and just bring in a couple of years, you can do that. And then also make items inactive in bulk. So if you wanna make them inactive in QuickBooks Desktop, it's super fast and easy. If you wanna make them inactive in QuickBooks Online, that's a one by one process, unless you use Transaction Pro Deleter and then you can do it in bulk. So, um, so the first thing is the add edit multiple list items. And I actually have QuickBooks 2020 open here. So I'm gonna demo it for you. So to get to the add edit multiple list items, that is under your list menu in desktop. And you're just gonna go to add edit multiple list items. It'll go ahead and open up the screen and then you can uh, edit any of these four types of lists in bulk. So uh, if I go ahead and, you know, if I'm in, in these customers and, you know, maybe Hamby Company, I want to, you know, make sure that everybody has a city or I want to assign a class or something like that, then I can actually use this tool to go through an update in more of an Excel format, right? It looks like Excel, I can drag and drop, I can fill down, there's all kinds of things that I can do. Um, if you don't see the columns that you want or the fields that you want to edit here, you can actually customize the columns and then just add the columns that you're going to edit in desktop just by adding or removing. And then this is just a fast, easy way to go through and kind of edit those lists to get them ready for an export or a conversion. So that's, that's our first uh, kind of tool that I wanted to show you to help you clean up your lists. The second one that I wanted to show you was the condense and archive utility which if you go under file and then utilities, and then you go to condensed data, this is where you're able to um, remove transactions to try and make the number of targets smaller so that you can convert over. Um, remember, we have to keep under either that 350,000 or 500,000, who knows? <laughs> but if you're trying to make it smaller, then you can use the tool. Okay, this, but this is new right here. That's odd, I just find that so odd. I, I know, so. File. Yeah, it's like you could totally strip the audit trail. Ah, we're all like, no, no stripping the audit trail, but you can strip the audit trail, I guess now. That must be a new feature with 2020. I'm not, I don't, I'm not in desktop very often. So if this has been out for a couple of years, I didn't know, but I think it's new. So um, you can go ahead and choose that. And then, oh, I think I just did a bad thing. Um, <laughs> I think I just did a bad thing, Liz. Let's go ahead so there was a question in our in our Q&A and I'm going to go ahead and say the answer is yes. So Melissa asked, will Transaction Pro work if it's hosted by Right Networks? And the answer is yes, that we have um, several QuickBooks desktop clients that they're just a, a better fit in desktop, but they we want to be able to access it. So they're hosted by Right Networks. And yes, you can have a uh, Transaction Pro subscription hosted in Right Networks and utilize it there. Yeah. 
And then the last thing that I was going to show you, and I have, these are all the different screens that I just, I just totally just condensed. I don't even know what I did to it, but, oh, I, re I removed the audit trail. <laughs> so, all right, I just removed the audit trail from this. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully it won't take very long, <laughs> but that's what I did. So um, you can choose how you want to summarize your data. Uh, you can re uh, remove unused list entries. So this is just a fast and easy way to clean up your data. Um, the, the last thing that I wanted to show you that you may not know about, and I don't know when my desktop data, and there's not a lot of data in there, so hopefully it'll be done pretty soon. Um, if you go into the lists and you select all customers or all vendors, um, if you have inactive items, this new column kind of shows up when you select all. And what you can do is you can actually just click right next to each item that you want to make it active. And that's a really fast way to inactivate a lot of things on a list before you bring it into uh, to QuickBooks Online. All right. Um, Catherine's saying, Catherine has a great question. It was my understanding that the condensed feature was not really a good thing to do as it doesn't do it property. properly. Is that not the case now? I heard the same thing, Catherine, and here's my thought on it. If I'm going to condense because I want to convert over, I'm fine with that because I'm not going to use the database anymore. But I have heard that the condense and archive isn't good if you're going to continue to use um, your QuickBooks on uh, your QuickBooks desktop company. And Murph, who's the person I heard that from, I think is with us today. So if that is different, Murph, that would be awesome if you could kind of um, enlighten us on that because that was the last that I heard as well, Catherine. All right. So uh, the QuickBooks Online to QuickBooks Desktop conversion tool. That has to be completed in Internet Explorer. So you can do the conversion. Um, it's a little wonky, I'm not gonna lie. Um, strange things happen when you're trying to access it, but it does work. Um, but you've gotta use Internet Explorer with it. Um, <clears throat> and you must append the URL to actually get to the tool. If you try to click on the gear icon, um, it disappears. So you can't actually get to the export tool. So I'm going to show you a trick um, to actually go in and get to that uh, export tool while you're in Internet Explorer. Um, also, some items and details won't convert. The details are in this hyperlink for you. Um, it may take more than one export to get it right. This is actually in the support from Intuit, is that if your data does not export correctly to desktop from online, um, try again. It may do it better the second time. Who knows why, but it may do it better the second time. Or you could use something like Transaction Pro to make sure that all of it comes over correctly into your desktop company. Um, <clears throat> you can also use the export tool to just import lists and balances into QuickBooks Desktop, which I think could be new because I don't ever remember seeing that option before. Um, but you do have the option to do that now as well. And then just a little note, please cancel your subscription after you have done the export. Um, so you don't continue to pay money for something you're not using. Including okay. payroll. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Um, just, all right. Yeah. We're going to stop here for the Liz and Heather's coolest thing this month. Um, Liz actually shared this with me, and it is the coolest thing. Like, it's kind of life-changing if you do a lot of conversion work. Um, because what it allows you to do is run Internet Explorer in your Chrome browser. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> it allows you to run Internet Explorer in your Chrome browser. Not a lie, you can go to your Chrome web store and you can get it. Um, there's documentation that you can read about to kind of help you get acclimated with it. But the way that it works, and I actually have it open right here, is you download the extension. Oops, that's not it. Let me go, where am I? Um, that was... That, that's not it either. I, yeah, I think that was it. it. It was just showing it behind the scenes. So it's like, it's there. It's there. So right here, I am in Chrome. You guys can see I'm in Chrome. Well, if I want to do my export, watch what happens. I go to the gear icon. I go to export data. And then I say, I want to go down to desktop. And then I click on move to desktop. And then it says, oh, you got to use Internet Explorer, right? So what this tool does is watch this. If I click on a new tab, and then I come over here and I click on the IE tab utility, is it opens up 
an internet explorer extension that basically I'm guessing tricks it. Don't really know how it works, just know that it works, but it tricks it into thinking that it's internet explorer. So now what I can do is I can go back to quickbooks.intuit.com and I can, oops, and I clicked the wrong thing again. Let me do it again. It's right over here. So I'm gonna go over here and I have to make sure that when I'm typing in the navigation that I'm typing it here um, under, you know, at the end. And yes, it keeps telling me I have to subscribe to this demo company, but I don't really have to do that. All right, so now I'm in Internet Explorer and I'm gonna close that out because we don't need it. So we're getting a whole bunch of, that's really cool. How did you find that? <laughs> Yes, so you go to the <laughs> Chrome really store and then put in Internet Explorer and yep. um, come on, close out. So one of the questions is why you're, why you're fighting with, with that page right there. One of the questions yeah. was, um, does this work with Mac? And my answer was, is this is a Chrome add-in, so I don't right. think it would matter. But I don't, I don't have a Mac, so if uh -huh. anybody else has a Mac and has tried this, if they want to add in. I don't know why this isn't, this worked yesterday. Let me try saving it. Yeah, that is a valid number. For some reason, you don't like it. All right, let's see if I can go back. Yeah, we can just keep on going. Yeah, I'm gonna try and go back. Um, let's see if that's gonna work. It's all these testing environments that we all have to have. I know, I know, yeah. So let's see if it's gonna, and you can't refresh either. If it refreshes, it kicks you out. Anyway, my point is, is if I go over here and I try to click on the gear icon to actually do the conversion, you notice that it disappeared. So what you actually have to do is you have to go back and grab the URL from the Chrome side, because I'm in Chrome over here, and go back in here and then find the end of that URL, go ahead and paste it, and then press the uh, enter key and it should bring up the tool to export. Let's see if it works without asking me for my credit card number. There we go, look at that. Yay! Can you believe that, it? Gear icon disappearing. Let me just say that's not because of the, the add-on or the add-in, that's actually just because this tool doesn't really, the export data tool doesn't really work great and it's just the gear icon disappears so it that's why you have to do what yeah. Heather just did that export QuickBooks desktop you have to type that in the URL right and then once I click once I'm in an Internet Explorer see it brings me to the actual export screen bam I am in Chrome guys I am in Chrome is this not amazing right holy moly yeah so very cool stuff um, I mean, that, that's, that was just like, she told me that I'm like, what? No, no, that can't really be, um, that can't really be what it is. And it is, it's crazy. So, okay, so you're gonna go ahead and do that. I gave you guys some screenshots. You can go through your conversion and then you'll get an email. It's not gonna show up on your homepage like they say it's gonna show up. You're gonna have to go and look for it and then you'll start the whole process over where you'll lose the gear icon and then you'll find the gear icon and then you'll have to download your file. So um, you'll go through these processes. I want to get into TPI, so just know that I have screenshots for all of you in the deck that you can download later to follow all of these steps, okay? So these are all the steps to download it into QuickBooks Desktop, and bam, then we're in QuickBooks Desktop. So cool, huh? Very cool very stuff. Very cool. You, Lots of steps. But Lots of yeah, steps. Very cool. So how do you migrate? So how do we migrate? How much data should we migrate? And I took Michelle Long, because she says this all the time. This is her quote. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. So <laughs> if you have 20 years of data, it does not mean that you should convert or migrate 20 years of data. You want to only migrate. <laughs> I can see your machine is Michelle. Michelle's like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to die. Yeah. So we, we want to make sure that we're migrating only what we need. So how much transactional data is needed to run the company? Will the old accounting system be available as an archive? So if they were on desktop, they can go back in and look up old stuff in desktop. You don't need to move all that over to QuickBooks Online. Um, and then how complicated are the workflows? I, so I, you know, if you've got inventory, 
if you've got payroll entries, um, that's a lot of work. And so I would not want to do five years or 20 years or I, one year is a lot for me. Um, if you can get the data in another way, typically that's nice. But that all being said, compar comparative financials are so nice. It's so nice. So you could do that with a journal entry, but you don't typically, you know, try to keep it, it's simple. All right. We're going to raise a toast and then we're going to dig in to demo. Yes. Yeah, because we can we can use a tool for all of this. <laughs> we can. We don't have to make it cleaner, stuff. right? right. <laughs> so I Isn't love this drink? drink. It's a it's a champagne drink. You toast, we'll host. I love that. Um, so here's a toast to Right Networks and Transaction Pro for making our lives easier and allowing us to work in the cloud and not have to drive places every day. And this is three ingredients. That's like, yeah. So cheers. It's nice and easy mm. and pretty. And it's delicious. It's very melony ish. All right. So, all right. So, Michelle, Michelle we're so glad you... that you're here with us. And she's going to critique, critique me, Michelle, because I'm going to go through the demo and you're going to say, no, that's wrong. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I have prepared what we're going to do today is we're going to go in and we're going to take a look at the uh, the desktop export tool um, and then we're going to import into QuickBooks. Does that sound good? Or into QuickBooks Online. Does that sound good, everybody? Awesome. We have a yep. ton of people on today. This is awesome. This is awesome. All right. So using Transaction Pro to migrate data. First of all, there's two versions. QuickBooks Online, there's a QuickBooks Online version which you subscribe to per company. So I would buy a QuickBooks, uh, a Transaction Pro account for each of the QuickBooks Online companies that I'm going to be using with Transaction Pro. Um, and there's different levels, which we'll talk about a little bit later, depending on what you need to do in QuickBooks Online. And then there's the QuickBooks desktop product, which is completely separate. And that actually works with any of your desktop companies. So you purchase it once and then you have it for all the companies. Um, it supports all lists and transactions. Um, and it includes templates to help, to help you get started. And I love this, love this, love this. So the steps to migrating with Transaction Pro, this is very simplistic. Um, there are guides on uh, Transaction Pro's blog that will talk you through or walk you through pretty much any question that you have. Um, there's videos, all kinds of amazing stuff. So first you're gonna create the company, right? So you wanna create the company, whether it's in desktop or QuickBooks Online, customize your settings, and then you're gonna import your data. Now, really important, there's an order to import transactions both into QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online and those, that order is actually made available to you um, on the website. So you can click on that. And I think that's probably um, one of the most helpful resources out there. Wouldn't you agree, Michelle, is, is really understanding the order that you should be bringing the data in? Definitely. That keeps from a lot of errors and a lot of headaches as you're importing the data, is just understanding the flow of how it should come back in. Yeah, and so it's normally you're going to import the chart of accounts, I would imagine, first. That's what I would always do first because it's like mm -hmm. the backbone, right? Um, and then customize your settings. I mean, you don't have to do your customize your settings at the second step. I think logically that's how my brain works. So I, you could argue with me about that. Um, and then you're going to import your chart of accounts, then your other lists, right? Your vendors, your customers, um, terms, things like that. Um, and then uh, import your transactions in workflow order. And that's really the important thing, right, is importing it in workflow order. And one of the things when I was setting up this demo um, was you need to understand the data that's in the existing company or coming over from another accounting system too. You need to understand how, what kind of data is coming in. Like, for example, I was importing, we're going to import bills. And if you are importing bills, you may think, well, I just need to make sure I have the chart of accounts set up and um, the vendor set up. Well, what if you have product and service items on those bills, right? What if there's classes or, you know, other information? You've got to make sure that you get all those lists in because all of those fields relate to each other. And if one of them isn't imported, you're going to have errors. 
um, and problems. Um, then after you've entered them in, you're going to enter in your beginning balances and then reconcile the accounts. And again, you could enter your beginning balances first and then import. I think I, you could argue with me about that, but at some point you're going to go ahead and put in um, the beginning balances. And Liz, you had mentioned that setting up like a journal entry mapping, right, in Transaction Pro to import those beginning balances, right? Yeah, so what I was saying is that, that there's been a need to be able to say, I don't want to have just one posting for the entire uh, life of the QuickBooks file, but instead say, I want to have trial balances for each year. So you can actually go into QuickBooks, say, well, this is what my trial balances would be, and then you could map that, and then you could import it. So that way, you know, whenever you're pulling those years comparison reports, you can say, this is what, you know, how I did in, in other years instead of just one. Um, Right. date. Okay. Balance. We've also seen customers that don't want to bring the detail in and they'll bring in that journal entry month to month to be yep, able to right. do their comparatives and they'll import in them as journal entries, the trial balances for each month. Right. Yeah. And you can find the order to import the transactions. I put the link here and there's an order for both desktop and online. I know in your knowledge base, Michelle, is, is there really a big difference between the two or are they basically the same? Basically the same. It's just, of course, desktop, you have a few other types of transactions that aren't available in online. That's really the big difference there. And what would you say is the most common error? Where, where, where do people typically kind of flounder, as it were, when they're doing their imports? Um, a lot of it's just not, I mean, I've seen people try to do receipts before they've done invoices or, you know, do their payments before they put the bills in, you know, just not yeah. thinking they're just going down a list and grabbing whatever file and not thinking that there's a specific order or doing deposits before you've done sales receipts. And um, so, so that's why we kind of created this just to kind of give you an actual checklist to go through to make sure you're getting them in the right order. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you really do have to be methodical when you're doing this type of, of work. You have to be methodical and validate as you go, too. Um, and I love that when we get into the demo that Transaction Pro actually does that for you, because if you try to bring something in and it's not working, um, you know, or it's not mapped correctly, you're going to know, and it even tells you what you need to do to fix it, which is really great. So, um, so migrating data from QuickBooks Desktop to online, you can use Transaction Pro Exporter and or an IIF file from QuickBooks Desktop. So if you have an IIF file, you could export that. And then there's this beautiful mapping tool that I'm gonna show you, or mapping Excel file that Transaction Pro has created for us that you can just copy that data into if you need to, um, and then bring that into QuickBooks Online. Um, so you can copy the data columns into a sample Excel file, select the mapping in Transaction Pro online, and then import. So the predefined Transaction Pro maps, um, and, and I think, Michelle, you had said that not all of the QuickBooks Online ones have been uploaded yet. You said towards the end of next week those will be up. Right. Right now, we can't share our online maps for um, for the online product. We can for our desktop, but that is something development is working on, and I've been told at least by the end of the month, but um, supposedly by the end of next week, that we're going to be able to start sharing those those files, so we'll be able to create these samples for you while you're doing your data migrations to help you out with a step. Yeah, that's fantastic, and you know, when I looked at this with the, the desktop file, um, we're going to go in and look at the desktop product in just a second, you can actually import the mappings. You give us the DAT files, which can be imported, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you can import the mappings and then use the spreadsheet that they've created that are basically aligned with those mappings. So you just populate the data, bam, you're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, right over here, you have the Excel file, which I'm going to open up in just a moment. And then we have the sample export maps, which is a zip file that has the maps, the sample maps, the DAT files that can be imported into the desktop product um, for pretty much, I mean, there were, there were, is it every single list and transaction or is it most of them, Michelle? I think we have all of them now. If not, we, we will. <laughs> if I'm missing one, let me know. But I think that they're mostly there. So, okay. 
Cool, awesome. Yeah, no, it was really helpful. And I'm gonna open mine up in just a moment. So um, so let's, uh, let's head back over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the mapping that I pulled in. So I had actually downloaded the template. We'll give it just a second to load. This is the template that I had downloaded um, for this demonstration. And notice that it has a tab across the bottom for each type of transaction and list. And it tells you in red um, which fields are required in order to complete the import. And then the fields in black are optional, but they're probably ones that you want to use. So in QuickBooks Desktop, if I wanted to export um, the chart of accounts, and go ahead and get out of here, um, I could actually export, uh, I could export list to IIF and then copy the columns into, uh, into that worksheet. So if I wanted to, you know, export the, the customer list, and I always, another best practice that I do is right on my desktop, I create a folder for the conversion and that's where everything goes so that I'm not looking through my, my, um, my directory trying to find what it is that I'm doing. So if I went in and put in customer list and I save it, then what I can do is I can go back to the IAF file, go find it. And let's see, there's my customer list. And then all I have to do is click, uh, right click on it. Whoops and then go to open with and open this it with This is a good Excel. trick right here. Yeah, so you open it with Excel. Did I do that too fast? I just no, right click with my mouse. It. Okay, and then what I'm able to do is I could just take the names and all of the information for each one of these columns, which looks kind of you know funky here, but I could just copy and then paste this into that, um, you know, the customer, field right here. So I could come in here and just, you know, paste the company name here and populate the data that way. So if you're actually doing a full migration, you can actually work through each one of these tabs, export, import, and um, to, to actually, you know, get the data ready. And then when you're ready to go ahead and import into, um, into QuickBooks Online, you have basically every sheet filled out and you can just go through each one in order as the order of, uh, you know, suggested order of import. Another thing that you can do, so this was mentioned in the chat, is can you use Transaction Pro if you're migrating from a different accounting system other than QuickBooks Desktop and QuickBooks Online? And the answer is yes. So as long as you can get your data into Excel, then you can map the data and then, uh, then you can import it as need be. Right. So the next thing, and this will work, the IAF export is gonna work for your lists, right? You could do that with your lists if you want to, um, but you can't do that for your transactions. Now you could try to export a report, but that's, you know, that's gonna be a mixed bag and it's gonna take a lot of time. Just get Transaction Pro Exporter. So you notice that this is new. This is a new feature of Transaction Pro. Just came out about a month ago, right, Michelle? where you have the launcher that actually has access to all three of the Transaction Pro products, import, exporter, and deleter. So I'm gonna go ahead and export. I've already exported, um, we're gonna import a couple of things into, um, into QuickBooks Online. Um, I have already prepared the chart of accounts to import, um, and I've already imported my vendor list um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and export uh, the bills and the bills payments. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this is- Okay, so while that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and say for those people that are like me who bought Transaction Pro years ago and maybe you don't have all three versions, just one of them, one of the updates is, is now you have access to all three of them like Heather was saying, and then if you need to upgrade your account- Right. Uh, you can upgrade so that we have access to all three because it's Definitely. now a, a package. So I'm now an X, I'm in print, uh, Transaction Pro Exporter. Um, you can see all of the different lists and transactions that you can export. I'm going to export a bill here. 
So I'm gonna select bill and then I can filter by date. So maybe my start date for this particular company is January 1st, 2018. I'm gonna put in my beginning balances as of 12-31-2017. Um, one of the things that I can do is I have options. So I can do report basis, I can filter by a name, um, I can filter by accounts, classes, items. So if you're just trying to import or export certain things, maybe to go into another program, it doesn't even have to be QuickBooks, you could use Transaction Exporter for that. Once I've selected this, I'm gonna go ahead and retrieve the data. One last thing I just wanna mention here, and this is cool, is you can also select the since last export, um, which is basically if you're moving transactions from one company to maybe one desktop company to another desktop company, maybe you're doing intercompanies, right? Where you export one type of transaction out of one desktop company and then import it as a different type of transaction in another QuickBooks company. I've done that before. Um, well, you so can I'll have, give an example because you know yeah. one of the things that we could sometimes do is say we don't need both bills and bill payments in QuickBooks. We can yep. just say we need just checks. It's a source check. of data. Right. Yep. So then I'm going to go ahead and export it to a file. I can choose from CSV, Tab, or Excel. I, I prefer Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and export it to the file, give the file a name, bills to uh, import into QuickBooks, and we'll go ahead and save that. And then uh, I'm done. Now, a couple of things that I just want to mention here, because I'm importing a bill and a bill payment, one of the things that's really important for this process is this field right here, the reference number. I have to have a reference number both to import the bill and I also have to have a reference number in order to import um, the bill payment and have it apply to the correct bill. So this is really important. The other thing that can happen that you want to watch out for is if I have the same bill number on different days, I could end up with one giant bill for five years of data for that vendor. So you've got to make sure that you're being mindful of the data when you're, you know, before you actually do the import and look for things like the same bill number used over and over again, which is something that's actually super common um, for a lot of our clients. So you've got to kind of export it to Excel. Once you export it to Excel, I think it's right over here. Um, then you're going to go through and you're just going to kind of, what I do is I just kind of do a control um, end and then I sort by the vendor name or by the bill number and I try to see if I have any duplicates and then I can, you know, I can make changes here. So that's it. So I've exported and now that I've exported, I can go ahead and save the file and I'm ready to actually go in and import it into QuickBooks Online. Did I miss anything, Michelle? Do you have anything to add that would be helpful? No, not that you've pretty well been very thorough so far. <laughs> I know. I was about to say, hey, Michelle, you want to weigh in on how Heather's doing? <laughs> She's doing a great job. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, I love this stuff. I love this stuff so much. All right. So um, let's go ahead and import our information. Now, I've already imported, I'm going to get rid of this uh, IE importer. I've already imported the vendors in. Um, just to save us some time. So what we're going to do first is we're going to import the chart of accounts. So Which I, is a good thing to point out. So there is a workflow order when you're importing. And the reason that you want to pay attention to that workflow order is that you need to have a vendor in order to post your bills to. And you need exactly. to have items in order to, you know, have uh, uh, the bills post to. So there's a workflow order that that's listed on one of our slides. So if you're going through this and you want to know right. the order to import transactions into QuickBooks Online, we actually have that handout available to you. We do, yes. I put links in the PowerPoint for all of that for you guys. All right, so I'm going to go into the chart of accounts here just to show you that there's no chart of accounts. I feel like the magician here. I'm going to show you what it looks like before. Um, Hopefully I deleted the chart of accounts when I was doing my testing, so I don't, okay, yeah, we're good. All right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in, I would have already connected the account to Transaction Pro and gone through the OAuth authorization. Um, uh, so I would have already done that, and now I'm ready to just go ahead and import. So the first step, and notice that I also have access to all three tools right from the screen as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Import, 
And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select accounts because I want to import my chart of accounts. And then it's going to ask me to drag and drop the file that I want to import right into uh, right into that little bucket there. So I'm going to scroll down and grab that sample file that I uh, had downloaded from the TPI website. And I'm going to click next and I'm going to import the accounts. And notice that it pulled in every sheet from that workbook. So if I had the data populated for every one of these sheets, you guys can see the power here of how fast this would be for me to go through and import this entire company. It's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, notice that it automatically mapped the columns for me. I didn't have to do any mapping here because I used the template. No mapping, it's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna preview and import my data from here. I can review my data to make sure everything looks all right. Um, one thing I'm gonna tell you is that account subtype, gosh, I wish there was an easy way to go through and populate that, but there's really not. You just have to sit there and do it. Um, so now that I've done that, everything looks good to me. I'm gonna go ahead and just click that little import button and then click net, yes, and bam, it's gonna go on out there and it's going to populate my chart of accounts. One thing while you're doing that, I just want to mention that watching with the account type and the account subtypes, if you notice, there's no spaces between the words and that that's a common error we get, you know, people will try to do fixed asset and leave that space between. There actually is an article on our knowledge base that that lists all these exactly how um, QuickBooks is expecting them, you know, what spaces are left out and how it's worded to um, help you out with that process. That's that data dictionary that I shared, right? Is that in there? Actually, there's a whole nother article just oh, on account types, uh, okay. subtypes. And you read my mind, Michelle, because I actually left that error in here. Just to make that point. <laughs> I just jumped ahead of you. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, it's perfect. It's because it's a, it is a really common error. So here, mm -hmm. I left a space between interest earned. So what I can do, which is really awesome, is I can just go in right in that field. I don't have to go back to the spreadsheet. And I can just delete that space, click import, and it's going to go on out there and it's going to, oops, it's not going to do it. Uh, a business validation error. Um, uh, apparently interest income has a different type than other income. Oh, it does? It went in earlier. I don't know. I'm not, that's what the error is saying is that the sub account. Yeah, it went in earlier. I'll try it again. Oh, see, it wasn't me. I was like, I'm not crazy. I did this before. <laughs> so that's how easy it is to import. So now I'm done with the chart of accounts. I've already done the vendors to save us some time. And how are we on time? I have three minutes to get bills and bill payments in. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. So I'm going to go to choose the import. I'm going to select bills. I'm going to remove the file that I've already, because I'm not going to use that same file. I'm going to use a different file. So I'm going to go find the bills to import. And I'm going to drop it in there. Click next. I'm going to click import sheet. Now I've already come in here and I've already mapped this. And I saved the map. So once I had mapped it, I had gone through and I selected the mapping of the columns in my spreadsheet to the fields in QuickBooks. Then what I was able to do is click save mapping. So now I don't have to do it again. So if you're importing from say a, a point of sale system or a third party system and you need to import transactions over and over again, the good news is, is you just set your mapping up one time and then you save it. And every time you pull in that spreadsheet, then it's going to go ahead and grab that mapping. You're, you're never gonna have to do it again, which is huge. So I'm gonna go ahead and preview and import my bills and hopefully I'm not gonna get an error. It worked earlier. <laughs> and it is, I mean, I'm gonna tell you when you're going through, oh, look at that, woohoo! So all my bills are now in QuickBooks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and import my bill payments. So I'm gonna go into the bill payments. I gotta remove this file. I'm gonna go grab my bill payments to import. Click select file, import my sheet. There's my saved mapping again. And I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert. I am gonna have an error because I didn't import all the bills and I was lazy and I didn't go ahead and get rid of the ones that aren't going to match to a bill. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. It's gonna go ahead and look for all of these uh, bills and apply the bill payments to them. Um, one thing I did have to do that I should have showed you on the mapping was there's actually a field for to be printed that you need to actually say false 
And if you don't, it actually marks them all to be printed. So I had to go in and do that manually into the field matching. So where was that? Well, maybe I didn't have to do that. Oh, actually, I bet they all came in because I didn't do it. I bet they all came in to be printed. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so right here under my to be printed, I would have wanted to put false because if I don't put false, they all come in as to be printed and my check numbers don't come in. And that's another plus to the data dictionary because um, especially the online one, it does yeah. tell you what it will default to if you don't import anything in. So exactly. You know. But the good news is what I'd be able to do here is go back to home, click on delete, pull mm -hmm. all those bill payments right back out, right? So I can go in and we'll do it as a, we'll do it as a create time today, right? Go ahead and preview that baby, delete it. You forgot to check rows. Oh, I forgot to check rows. Thank you. No, I do not wish to delete. Now I wish to delete. Go ahead and delete, delete, delete. I do that so whimsical, like just so freely, right? She's just deleting. <laughs> so free with my deletion. All right, so now I've deleted all of those, hopefully. Did they delete? It, doesn't look like they it looks like it was just thinking, so. I don't know, I'm gonna, maybe I had more than delete. Let's see. I don't know. I'm not sure if they deleted or not. Yeah, it's not. It's not deleting. Maybe I need to clear my cookies because I've import I've deleted this before. So we've got some <laughs> questions that are happening over in yeah. chat, Michelle. Okay. And uh, let's see. Okay. Well, um, Heather's doing that. Um, Transaction Pro is actually two separate products. So there is a online product for QuickBooks Online, and then we still have our desk product, desktop product for the QuickBooks desktop. So right now you are still, if you're using the desktop, then you are still going to use the um, desktop version of Transaction Pro. Can I get back to my PowerPoint? And then Kathy's got a question about merging multiple QDO files together. Okay. And I can say both myself and Heather have, have both merged QDO right. yeah. files. And then she's saying, can you do it with classes as well? So does Transaction Pro talk to classes and import classes? Yes, yes, it does. Um, one thing we have, just just to be um, to let you know, right now, for some reason, Intuit is not opened up the ability to do if you're just doing one class for transaction on the expenses. So like for your checks and your bills, if you're just using the one per transaction, for some reason, that field's not been opened up to us yet. Um, but we can do the line by line for the checks. And that's what most people I know tend to do, but just be aware if you are someone that's just doing a single class to a transaction, that is a limitation right now. Um, just because Intuit has not opened that up in their API for, for us to be able to import into. Cool. And Lisa's got a question. So she's saying, okay, so if I was going to do a QBD and a QBO conversion, I need both products. And the answer is yes. But I can tell you that once you have these, and we're going to talk about pricing here in a second, but once you have them, you, you've, you've got a, a tool that you've learned. And with QuickBooks Desktop, you buy it. So I can't wait to talk about pricing here in a second. Yeah. So I'm kind of jumping it, Lisa, and so I'll let Heather keep going so that way we can talk about pricing. Yeah, so tips and things that you should know when you're using Transaction Pro is reference numbers are key when you're importing linked transactions. You've got to make sure that you've got those reference numbers in there because the corresponding payment will need to reference that reference number, no pun intended, um, in order for it to link itself to it. Um, be mindful of the character limits. So uh, character limits are very important. Um, and uh, refer to that desktop data dictionary and the online data dictionary. Utilize the help resources. There's so many help resources. There's uh, articles, there's videos. Um, if you need help, they actually have a support team that will make an appointment with you and help you. And Michelle can help you. Um, <laughs> and then consider using a clearing account to group payments and deposits. If you're having trouble with the undeposited funds, 
um, then you're gonna wanna use a clearing payment, a clearing account to do that. And what I use is I just have all of the payments, receive payments to go into the clearing account. And then I just use the bank fee to bring in the deposits. And then it just, it washes itself out. That works out really well. Um, so other ways that you can use Transaction Pro, importing payroll into QuickBooks, time data, um, cleaning up your list, getting inventory in, um, as Liz said, combining multiple QuickBooks online, uh, QuickBooks companies, whether it's desktop or online. Um, so there's lots and lots of different ways that you can use Transaction Pro. And it's, it's one of those tools that, you know, I know Liz, you and I, we use migration tools, I, at least, if not every week, definitely several times a month. Um, so it is a tool that you need to have in your toolbox. Um, again, the, the help resources uh, are amazing. Um, there's lots and lots of resources out there. And there's lots of pro advisors out there that have been using Transaction Pro for years and years, too. Mm -hmm. um, there's a great community of Transaction Pro experts that you can lean on as well. So definitely check out these, these resources. Um, the desktop product for importer only. So if you just have a client, and I had a couple clients like this where they just need to import the data from a third-party app into QuickBooks, you can buy just the importer only, which is $199. And then if you want the importer, exporter, deleter pro, that's $299. And it's a one-time fee. You're not going to pay every year. You just buy it, you own it. Um, anything else to add there, Michelle, on that one? No, nope, nothing. I think it right now. <laughs> okay. And then for QBO, it's $100 annually or $10 per month for the importer. Um, you get 200 rows of data per month, um, unlimited ex uh, export, record exports. Um, and then you also have the importer, exporter, deleter pro, which is up to three users. And then the plus, which is up to four, uh, up to 10 users. And then you have an enterprise version too. Is that right? Do you have an enterprise version too? Or is, it, is that just the plus um that's just the plus right now we are okay. working on developing because we've had numerous requests about being able to purchase ahead of time for multiple qbo companies at one time so yeah. that's coming sometime in 2020 cool fantastic and we have today's special <laughs> for the happy hour um there is a discount so you can get 10 percent off on any desktop purchase or 10 percent off any annual online subscription uh, to, if you use the promo code happy hour and that's through February 21st, I believe. So it is a limited time. So if you are interested in purchasing, um, I would do it soonish, soonish for sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so, uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for joining us today. I agree. Um, do we want to put the poll up? Oh yeah, definitely. Because there's um, lots of questions here, and so I have to apologize. Yeah. I've answered as many as fast as I can, yeah. <laughs> but okay. there's a lot of interest, and so there's a lot of Fantastic. really good questions that have been Fantastic. happening. So I've tried to answer answer everybody, but if you want more information, a lot to, of people are looking for information here. This is great. Mm -hmm. And and Michelle's one of us, which I love that. That means that she's <laughs> yeah. going to answer our smart questions with smart answers. Uh, uh, yes, both sides I've been of in your shoes too. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. I think that's just fantastic because it is, especially when you're first starting getting started um, using migration tools. You do need support, and you need, you know, there's, you know, it, it's just nice to have that helping hand that you can throw a question out to and get, you know, a quick answer back. So lots and lots of interest here. This is fantastic. Right. So I'm going to leave that up for for a little while longer. Um, I. Uh, we have uh, our, yeah, I didn't actually import our bill payments or delete our bill payments and re-import them, but I think you guys get the gist of it. I think so, so too. Yeah. All right. I'm going to count you guys down. Everybody's still voting here. This is fantastic. Um, so I'm going to give you guys like five more seconds to vote. Five, four, three, two, <laughs> And when people are voting, okay, well, now I feel like I need to leave it up longer because like all these people just voted. <laughs> so, the spaceship has not left yet. Yeah, right, right. Oh my gosh, that's too funny.
I was going to answer the last couple of questions I've seen come in. Um, you know, as far as the online, it is a one subscription per QBO company. So if you have multiple QBO companies, it does take multiple subscriptions. The desktop, when you purchase, you will get every update for that version. You don't automatically get the next version when it comes out. But as long as we're doing updates for the current version, you'll keep getting those updates as part of your, your original purchase, which version eight, as they mentioned, was just released two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So it has just come out. So we'll be doing updates in version eight for the next couple of years. <laughs> so, so anything, any changes, any fixes, any additional features will be done with the version you have. So that will be included with your purchase. And Michelle, you guys have an affiliate program. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, if you are a pro advisor or accountant or whatever that recommends to your customers, we do have an affiliate program you can sign up where you are assigned an affiliate link that you can have your clients purchase through that link and then you will get a percentage back on the products that you do sell. Um, if you're interested in that, definitely um, send an email to, um, I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Val's <laughs> email right now. Um, it's, um, oh, Val Holzer. That's it. I'm going to type it in the chat. And Fantastic. she handles our um, affiliate program and she mm -hmm. can definitely get you information. There is also a link on our website to the affiliate program. If you go on our website, you can find out more information about it there as well. Fantastic. And it looks like uh, we have at least one person that didn't get to vote in the poll. If you could just put your email address to just the panelists, then I'll make sure to add you to the list. So go ahead and put that in the chat just to the panelists and then I'll, I'll make sure that, that we get that information over to Michelle. So Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you well, for thank answering you. all these questions and um, for your insight. This was fantastic. I enjoyed it. You all are fun to hang out with. <laughs> Well, we are super, super glad that you are here. And, and um, there's a couple of, of emails that are just kind of coming straight to me with Perfect. contacts. So I see them there. That's all that I want to say. And I will make sure that I grab those and pass them along. So those of you who didn't vote, uh, just know I am seeing your emails. And so I will get those passed over. Fantastic. So you guys can review, uh, can view all of our recorded episodes at our website, theappyhour.com or qbappyhour.com. Both of those will work. You can also connect with our sponsors. So the codes that we gave you for the discount is on the bar book page for Transaction Pro, along with the drink recipe and other information um, and how to reach Michelle. Um, so you can get the drink recipes, uh, read our blog. We have some great, we have a great blog article on migrating data. <laughs> that you guys can read and or just send us a message just say hi <laughs> well and heather yeah well done oh thanks hon very good that was a lot of content really <laughs> you know, in depth thorough and it's stuff that we all you know need and want to do especially this time of year so super relevant and i think michelle even said that you get a gold star you do. You did very oh, good. Thank you so much. <laughs> you start doing my demos for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, it was fun. It was fun. I love doing that that kind of stuff. So it was it was great. So yeah. So make sure you visit um, uh, uh, Transaction Pro's website. Make sure you join our Appy Hour Lounge Facebook group. That's where we can connect and talk apps and get appy. Uh, and make sure you register. If you're on Facebook with us today, you can register and join us in the Zoom room where you'll be able to see the chat and the Q&A that's coming in. Um, so you can do that as well. And then also subscribe to our newsletter. I just sent out a newsletter today. Um, if you haven't subscribed to it, you can do that on our website. Uh, and you know we, we include all our blog articles, links to our recordings and other information about things that are going on here. So in two weeks, we're gonna be joined by Ash Beetson from NetTracker. So if you've been looking for a fixed asset management app for QuickBooks Online, look no further. We're going to be talking fixed assets. Uh, you know, this is a, a really interesting one, Heather, because we've been hearing chatter about, hey, I wish there was one of these tools out there. And there is. And so I, is, I think yeah. that one of the things we're going to be doing is just raising awareness yep. that there are some tools out there who, that will manage your assets and dep do the depreciation. And it does it automatically. You set it up one time and it just handles it. So very cool. Make sure to tune yeah. in for that one. And look at all of the great apps that we have coming up for the next 
few months. We have some really neat apps. Vic AI, we've got uh, ADP coming on a couple times with our good friend Matt and uh, Practice Ignition. So super excited about uh, what we've got coming up. So thanks again, Michelle. Huge thank you to Transaction Pro, part of the Right Networks family. Uh, we're going to have the other, the, your, your sister app, uh, uh, Audify. Here's my shirt. Oh, yeah. Hey, see, I didn't wear mine today. I should have wore mine. <laughs> I got mine on. I don't have one. I need one. I need a TV. Okay. I'll, I'll let Val know you need one. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you to all of our, uh, our audience. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you found this help, uh, helpful. We will have the video up usually by the end of today, uh, if not definitely up by tomorrow. So thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you in just a couple of weeks. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye.